Hey everyone, I'm Jenny Dietrich. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm the founder and CEO of Armit Dietrich and the author of Spin Sucks, which is both a book and a blog. I hope you'll check out the blog for sure. Um, we're going to talk today about how to write blog posts that get read and shared. This actually is a five part series. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how to generate and capture blog post ideas. The next series will be tricks to write popular blog posts, then how to get people to share your blog posts, how to create content hubs, and finally, now that you've created all of your content, how to distribute it. <clears throat> so, let's start with how to generate blog post ideas. Google has sent down their uh, Google Alerts, <clears throat> and not many people know that because, of course, Google is not notorious for saying, hey, we're sundowning this, so stop using it. You just sort of figure it out because it stops working. So if you already have Google Alerts set up, you probably have noticed that the information you get back is not so great. <clears throat> it's not as good as it used to be. So I want you to think about a different um, tool called TalkWalker, talkwalker.com slash alerts. And what you'll do is you'll set up these um, alerts to do things like, for instance, if I were wanting to do uh, content marketing, I would put in the search query content marketing in quotes plus trends, bring back everything, all languages, you can do, do just English, have it come to you once a day, not when it ups, when it, whenever something updates on the web, stick your email in there and collect, create the alert. So here's what happens. You start to get an email every day that has information about content marketing and the trends in content marketing. So suddenly you have places where you can get blog post ideas just from those alerts and it comes to you in your email once a day so you don't have to go out and search Google or try to find you know what kinds of things you should be writing about. So very, very good tool from that perspective. <clears throat> The second is maybe, <laughs> there we go, Smart Brief. I love Smart Brief. So they have one, two, three, four, five, nine, thirteen, thirteen. 13, um, yeah, 13 topics. And then under there, they have subtopics. So for something like this, you would want to look at business, perhaps you'd look at media, uh, maybe even education or tech, and look to see what kinds of newsletters under those topics, main topics, are of interest to you. So, for instance, I subscribe to a smart brief on entrepreneurship, on social media, on PR and marketing, and I believe there's one more, word of mouth marketing. And that, again, comes to me in one email. Um, each news, each topic comes, so I actually get the four newsletters, or four, four emails every day. I have created an alert to go into a separate folder in my inbox so it doesn't actually hit my inbox, which is great when you're trying to manage all of your email. And then you can go through those newsletters and say, well, this looks really interesting. Maybe I should read this article and see if it conjures up any blog post ideas. So another great way to discover ideas. Then <clears throat> read the comments. And I know the joke is that, well, it's not really a joke because it's true, but you should never read the comments, and that's probably true on things like news sites and places where, Reddit, places where they don't mo moderate those kinds of things. Um, but most blogs where you're going to be hanging out for your industry um, or in market, content marketing or anything like that, the comments are going to be very, while people may not agree, they're going to be very civil and, and professional. So read the comments and say, not, and not only on your own blog, but on other blogs, influencer blogs, where you, uh, people you respect, and see what those people are saying. So this is a great example of that is Davina Brewster, Brewer, who uh, comments on Spin, Spin Sucks. She always, she's great. She always leaves a, a comment that's at least a blog post in and of itself. So I love to get those kinds of comments because I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Um, Stephanie Vermillion left a comment a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, this is really interesting in terms of how I build my domain authority on on a web on my blog, but how do I how many pieces of content do I have to create around one topic before Google sees me as, as an expert? And I was like, oh, that's a great question and, and it created an opportunity for me to write a blog post about it. So read the comments because there's lots and lots and lots of information in there. Pay attention to, cur to, to current events. Um, you know, the, the term is called newsjacking. Of course, there are good ways to do it and bad. Um, if you, you don't want to pile onto a, uh, a current event if it's, if you're going to end up doing something poorly. So for instance, 
Um, oh, when Robin Williams passed away, there were lots of blog posts written about what Robin Williams taught me about marketing, what Robin Williams taught us about suicide. I mean, those kinds of things. That's really tacky and really bad, so don't do those kinds of things. Uh, when Yahoo announced that they were going to ask employees to stop working from home or being remote employees, but they all had to move into the home office, the letter that went out from Marissa Meyer's office was pretty... Let's just say it wasn't my style of communication. And so I took that and I said, you know, there's, an, there's a reason that not just lawyers look at these kinds of things. You know, employee morale and, and company culture are built on the way that a leader communicates. And sometimes the lawyers don't allow for the kind of communication that you need to have in order to build those kinds of things. And it was pretty clear that the Yahoo letter was... The, the legal team was consulted, but the communications team was not. So I took that as an opportunity to write, if they had consulted somebody like me, this is what I would have written about. So there's an opportunity there. Uh, <clears throat> look in your sent mail. This is a really good idea that I stole from Andy Crestadina. And here's why you want to look in your sent mail. You're already answering questions and writing content every single day in your email. So, for instance, I had Olivia Adams and Nicole Walker both email me asking for advice about their careers. Very, very motivated, driven young women who want to, you know, succeed and, and find different ways to build their careers and get the attention of their boss's boss's boss. Um, so what was interesting is because I had emailed both of them on the same topic, I said, oh my gosh, there is a blog post in this. In this. So the, the blog post I wrote was advice to young PR professionals in how to build your career. So an, an interesting way on that. So those are the five ideas in just generating blog post ideas. I mean, of course, reading as much as you can helps and anytime you can do that. Um, Paying attention to what's happening in the world, you know, it's interesting. You could be out to dinner with friends. I always have my friends say, okay, I need to have a conversation with you about work and I don't want it to end up in a blog post. Or, you know what, you could totally write about this because they know me well enough to know that if it's something interesting, I'm going to write about it. So you start to pay attention to where you can generate blog post ideas no matter where you are. Those, those ideas will help. Then you have to capture your blog post ideas. So I took to the street and I asked different bloggers how they capture ideas. Erica Napolitano, who is also known as Redhead Writing, said, For the past year, it's been a notebook. I circle my ideas to keep them separate from my comedy stuff. She's actually here in Chicago doing um, Second City, so stand-up um, comedy. So she has her blog and, and that, two different lives. But my black notebook is class notes, brain droppings, and my purple notebook is stand-up comedy stuff. If I write it down, I don't forget. If I put it in my Mac notes, I'm screwed. Digital purgatory. So, if you know, there's not one way to do it. You could absolutely use two different colored notebooks if that's what you want. I actually have a notebook for fiction writing that has a bicycle on the front of it. And I know that that's the only, the only thing I put in that is uh, fiction stuff. Andy Cristadina, who I mentioned earlier of Orbit Media, he says, I use Google Docs. If I have an idea, I sometimes just write an outline very quickly, stop as soon as the idea is captured, and then add the link to the doc to the spreadsheet. Then over the next few weeks, if I find something that supports one of those partially written posts, I drop it in. So it's another easy, organized way to keep all of those ideas that you've been generating into in one spot so that when you have to sit down and write a blog post, voila, it's all there. Carrie Morgan says, I use a combination of an editorial calendar, putting the idea into WordPress as a quick draft, and scribbled pieces of paper floating around my desk, which is kind of funny because I think her cat likes to walk on her desk, so I'm sure those pieces of paper get knocked around. She said, I also keep a notebook in my car, which leads to said messy desk. So another great, great idea of how to use, um, how to capture your ideas. Mark Schaefer of Businesses Pro says, I type it as a headline in WordPress. And then when I'm ready to blog, the draft area reads like a list of ideas. It works for me. Um, Rebecca Iloff of uh, AirPR says, if I'm on a plane, I put it in the Notes app on my iPhone, and then I email it to myself after I have service again. Interesting. If I'm at work running around but have a spark of genius, like while on the toilet or listening to an engineer talk about something I don't really understand, I email myself ideas. And then when I have time, I copy and paste them into a larger Word document that's subcategorized. Categorized. So that's really interesting, too. Um, a friend and I were joking that we need to have a waterproof whiteboard in the shower because we both come up with really good ideas in the shower. So, you know, that kind of thing. 
You don't know where your ideas are going to come from. Danny Innie says, I just have a running Word document that I dump all the ideas into. Though, I like your carrier pigeon and chalkboard combo idea. I'll have to look into that. And he made that joke because when I emailed him, I said, how do you capture blog post ideas? Is it electronically? Is it on paper? Do you have a carrier pigeon and a chalkboard? So <laughs> I was being kind of a smart butt. Um, so he, he carried on to that. Uh, Jeannie Walter says, I have a magic St. Bernard named Sven who stores my ideas in his little collar bar barrel. And when he's napping, I write the headline in a WordPress dashboard and save it as a draft. Um, <clears throat> Matt Collier says, typically what I do is as I'm surfing, I'll come, uh, let me make a note there, as I'm web surfing, not surfing in the ocean, I will come across an article that will spoken, spark an idea for a blog post. Then, before I forget it, I'll go to my WordPress dashboard and create a new post with a title describing the post. And in that post, I'll write some quick notes about what I want to talk about and I'll link to the article I found. Just so I have it down and then later I will come back when I have time and write out the post. And then for me, I actually have tried all of these different ideas. Um, I have stuff, in fact, right in front of me right now in my notebook. There's some blog post ideas, um, conflict of interest stories, the Tihan Lacks acquisition in um, Canada, social tracking. So there's a couple of, of things in my notebook right in front of me that I have. Um, I also, like Andy, keep a Google Doc that has the headline that I'm thinking and some links that support it that will help me go, oh yeah, I was thinking about that or here's some stuff I can link to when I'm writing it. Um, I also have been known to just throw links into WordPress as a draft and, and do that. So the point is, is that there's not one size fits all. You're going to be generating ideas, you know, using one or all of the ideas that I suggested. And as you're generating the, those ideas, you have to capture them because sometimes you'll have six ideas at once and Sometimes, and then other times you'll have no ideas, so you want to make sure that you're capturing those ideas and keeping them in a spot where it's easy for you to remember what it was that you wanted to write about and have links to support it, to support your thesis that you can then link to in the blog post. So with that, I will leave you with, um, we'll come back later to do tricks to write popular blog posts, getting people to share your blog posts, content hubs, and then of course the all-important content distribution. I'll see you soon.